for uh, Arts Freedom Wales. Um, we're a bunch of young artists and we're going to be uh, discussing uh, the freedom of artistic expression um, and the limitations that we feel uh, are in place. So is there anyone who'd like to kick us off with how they feel um, they are supported in their artistic freedoms uh, in, in Wales? Yeah, um, I don't mind starting off at all. Um, so, like the rest of us, the three of us here, um, we're all quite young and new to, to you know, uh, to this. We're just kind of starting out, and um, um, I've had quite a year actually in in terms of within theatre and in the arts and um, kind of expressing myself. Uh, through uh, art and theatre, and um, I've been quite fortunate so far in terms of uh, my education. Actually, um, the degree I did, which was drama and theatre, and I did that in the Welsh language. It was all 100% in the Welsh language, which was great for me because I was just able to, you know, just study and research. Uh, the degree that I wanted to in my own language in Wales, which was, you know, great freedom for me, and made everything quite, you know, easy. Well, not easy, but um, you know, easier. Um, and yes, yeah, since graduating, then that course has really encouraged me uh, and other people in the course to create our own work. So um, during our time on the course. We had a lot of freedom. Everything was so open uh, in terms of you know tasks that were set. They were always quite vague. You know, um, create a piece of theatre, a ten-minute piece of theatre, um, in response to anything you want to. And um, you know, it was it was quite a shock to begin with. Um, you know, the freedom that we had, and I wondered, oh, is this something that it can happen outside of education as well? And so during my time in education, it's I you know approached Shimmer Theatre more so than anyone because I worked there, still work there, um, on the ticketing, and um, they've been so so supportive and made me realise that it is kind of possible to kind of express yourself freely um, if you kind of you know look for it and. Um, can make it happen. That's my big motto in life, which is make it happen. And um, so I took advantage of these opportunities while I was studying, and um, had the support of Shipman Theatre and a couple of other people, a couple of other organisations. And um, that's where it kind of led me to where I am now. So this year um, has been quite a busy one. Um, so I created my own piece of theatre, my own production. And I was fortunate enough to have um, uh, being awarded uh, grants by Arts Council of Wales, and that's one thing I, you know, I mean the application was it, it was it wasn't easy, but um, it was easier than I thought it would be, um, which again kind of made me feel oh they, they are allowing me to be quite free and uh, what not with that. Um, but yeah, maybe that's something that I, I didn't really know uh, about uh, Arts Council of Wales and their funding until I talked to a couple of people who are working in the arts. So I don't know if it's if there's something that could be done about that in order to encourage um, people uh, and to for people to know that you know Arts Council are there. Um, I don't know about you guys. How do you feel about that? I think that's a really interesting part actually about um, Arts Council Wales um, and I wondered if it really helped you if you've got a supporting organisation such as um, you know you had help from the Sherman so uh, Sean do you feel like in making your own work that it helps to kind of have a mentor that can guide you through those systems like uh, Arts Council applications and things like that? Yeah, no, I, I definitely think that that's, it's great to find an organisation or um, a, a venue that can be supportive. 
Um, because, yeah, guiding through that process, I think, can be quite tricky. For me, I do a lot of work in arts education. And whereas it, it differs slightly into what kind of pots of funding you can go for when you're working in arts and education, because there's sometimes more boxes to tick, as it were, in that kind of funding sense. Um, and I think as far as freedom of expression comes into that, I think that when applying for specific project funding, it can be, you can find yourself often tailoring a project to fit to fit a, a pot of funding. Um, mm. I don't think that's necessarily always a bad thing because it means that, like for example this year, there's a lot of funding available for things, arts related projects for things related to World War One, which is great because it means it focuses your, as an artist, it can focus your attention onto something rather than just having a massively blank canvas. You can focus in on something and be given the opportunity to, because you're narrowed a bit in your selection, you can have more artistic freedom in how you go about addressing that. Um, but I think I think that's more for like arts and education and that kind of thing. I think if, as an artist making my own work, I don't feel in being an artist in Wales that there's anything that I couldn't pick as a topic to like develop. But when it comes to things like education, I think you have there are a lot more not hoops to jump through, but there are a lot more criteria that you have to kind of meet and to be able to meet those picking topics that are relevant and that kind of thing, I think it's a bit more restrictive maybe. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, so sometimes the, the funding can kind of um, narrow down your, your choices because you, you know you have to meet a certain criteria. Um, Carry on, have you kind of experienced that kind of thing working with uh, Mess Up the Mess? I know they do like a lot of really big youth-led projects and do you ever feel like they may be tailored to a specific goal rather than being uh, free? Yeah, definitely. Like our funding is specific and we have to do like certain criteria to get funding. Um, certain young people can do certain projects like if we need like um, yeah, so I do feel like that and like recently I did a National Youth Theatre to Wales and I didn't have enough money. I got I got in to do the tech technical side of it. I didn't have enough money for the course. So like um like the only way I got funding was because I'm a Welsh speaker and Theatre Gunner Baseball gave me a bursary. So there's always like specific things I have to you have to meet. Like if I was an English speaker I wouldn't have been able to have got that support, you know? And um yeah, so we're always like you always tailor it to funding and it's probably really hard to find funding that is completely free and completely do whatever you want. Like, because if you don't have guidelines, I think that like they find it hard. Like, why are they giving you money? Like, it's they've got they've got to think of criteria, which like isn't always a good thing. I think it'd be nice to be able to just be free, but then on the other hand, like it's nice to be like if you have hidden boundaries and things and you have like it kind of changes the way you think and the way you structure things you know yeah yeah um, actually I, I'd really like to pick up on something that both you and Elgan have brought up which is the Welsh language and I'm you know born and bred in Wales but I, I would class myself as a Welsh learner I'm not very confident with Welsh and sometimes I feel that that can hold me back because there seems to be a lot more funding for Welsh language and Certainly for kind of more uh, the office-based side of theatre, a lot of the jobs you have to be a fluent Welsh speaker to even apply. So sometimes I feel like that limits me and I just wanted to know if maybe Sean, if you felt the same and then the opposite side of that argument from Elgan and Kerry ann as Welsh speakers. Yeah. Um, so I've just finished a project working in Wales Millennium Centre, um, which was a Lord of the Flies project, so it's with... Matthew Bourne's company, New Adventures, the charity arm of that Reborn. And then we were in partnership with uh, Wales Millennium Centre, Rubicon Dance, and the National Dance Company of Wales. Um, I'm, as Chelsea would class herself as well, a 
a Welsh learner and wouldn't feel particularly confident about conversing in Welsh, I think I can carry the gist of conversations and understand what's been said, um, but wouldn't probably be able to answer in English, but not be able to answer in Welsh. Um, Wales Millennium Centre is an amazing space for uh, both languages, and people converse in Welsh and English and combinations of the two all the time. Uh, a problem we found with, because there was another dance ambassador, James, who was, he's based in Chester, so he's not a Welsh speaker either. Um, a, as part of the of Wales Millennium Centre, because they're a charity and we receive money from the Arts Council, part of the the criteria for stuff that they do is that everything has to go up bilingually, which I think is fantastic. Um, that you should be able to, if your first language Welsh, you should be able to receive that information in your first language. However, as a, as a dance ambassador working on that, who isn't fluent Welsh, and neither is my uh, colleague, it meant that the stuff that we were trying to do was often slowed down by the fact that neither of us were could, could do our own translation, so we had to wait for translation so that everything could go, which I think is really important because it does need to happen, but I think that it would the other things could have happened a lot faster had one of us been fluent in Welsh. I feel yeah, I feel very lucky that I speak Welsh and um, like it does give me a lot of opportunities, but like I don't really think it's fair that I would get like a prioritised job or um, like a funding or example or anything just because I'm a Welsh speaker. Like it like it sort of takes away like like the value of the art, like if you are an amazing artist and you're an English speaker and you can't get funding, that's ridiculous really, isn't it? Like I don't really know. Like I, I'm just incredibly lucky that I do speak Welsh, I think. And I haven't really thought of it that much before. Like it is a really horrible thing that if you can't get funding just because of what language you speak, that's really scary really, isn't it? Yeah, I, I'm not sure if it's a case of that you speak Welsh or not with funding. Um, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure if that's what it is, but um, yeah, no, I think it's becoming more of a, an issue now. I feel um, you, you know a lot of like theatre venues and just you know sh shops etc. are needing more Welsh speakers in order to offer a Welsh language service to people. Um, I don't know. It, it just seems like the language is. Um, kind of on edge at the moment, uh, there's a lot of talk about it, um, so I don't know if it's because of where we are now um, with the Welsh language and that, that you know, um, why this we're having this discussion. Um, but yeah, no, certainly it does help when, uh, you know, we're applying for funding to Arts Council of Wales, but obviously you've got Arts Council of England as well, which you can also apply for. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think that also there's a lot of work being created in, in Wales at the moment. You know, a lot of um, really exciting work that, you know, bilingual and in English and in Welsh. And um, yeah, I think I, I've realised as well, that like in the last couple of years, there has been more, potentially more opportunity for Welsh lang language work. And maybe it's because there's a, a lot more English language work being created. I don't know. I'm, I'm not too sure. But you know that it's a bilingual country, isn't it? Um, I think it, it, it's a shame sometimes, actually, to see that both languages are segregated. And something that I've always been a little bit confused about. Sorry, I'm, I'm drifting off a little bit, but um, is having National Theatre of Wales and then Theatre Genedlaethol separately. Mm -hmm. I uh, yeah, I as you know, a young young artist. Growing up, I've always questioned that and been confused. I don't know about how do you how do you feel about that? I think that's a really really valid point actually, because uh, as a as someone who's not confident speaking Welsh but wants to learn, I sometimes feel like there aren't opportunities for bilingual work. Um, yes. Like I'm really interested in the relationship between the language you speak and then your personal identity. So for me, as someone who's grown up in a bilingual nation, it, it's a really like kind of vibrant area for artistic exploration. And so maybe there's a question that more needs to be done to support that kind of work that is bilingual and supports both languages rather than 
just Welsh or just English and yeah, maybe we can campaign for Theatre Again and NTW to do something together and you yeah, have that kind of sharing of, of language rather than yeah, the separation. Yeah, it, it would just be nice to maybe, you know, why do we need to representing Wales? Do you know what I mean? As in, you know, we're not two co countries, we're one country, um, you know, so, <laughs> I don't know, um, maybe having one to represent the whole of Wales would be enough, um, and that, you know, that it was bilingual, and, you know, I, I, with the production I did this year, Hi's Voice, it was a bilingual production, um, it, it's possible to do that even, you know, to do a, a production that is completely bilingual. Um, and we worked bilingually as well throughout the whole process, which, reflecting back back on it, um, we're quite surprised, but yet we're not. Um, you know, me and the director, Gethin, both are Welsh speakers, and then the guitarist uh, uh, was a Welsh learner, and the stage manager was an English speaker. Um, and you know, we, it was the whole process was completely bilingual, and it, it was quite refreshing actually to be a part of be a part of that and um, just just make things art accessible for everybody in Wales. I think, isn't it? For as me as a as a Welsh learner working in a bilingual environment, I think it does give you more confidence to yeah. to well to not even just to converse to know that to know that I can follow a conversation that's going on that is happening in Welsh and obviously there'll be the odd word that I don't understand but I think like being just in a bilingual environment it does give you that confidence and it's it, it becomes more comfortable as well to be to not feel like oh, I don't know what's going on or anything like that. Uh, I think I love working bilingually but sometimes projects feel like the bilingualness of it has, is a requirement rather than a support. Like, I feel like it should be supporting each other, and like, like we're speaking two languages, and it's really nice. And like, just like it should join people together. It should make it a more enjoyable experience. But sometimes it is a requirement, and I think that's a problem. I think sometimes in bilingual projects, and I think yeah. <laughs> yeah, to kind of uh, move the conversation forward a little bit. Um, with that idea of restrictions, what would you say are the biggest things that restrict what work you produce? Like I know for me it's whether it would be marketable, whether I think there would be an audience for it, um, and whether I would uh, get a good response to it, that can sometimes limit the kind of stuff I produce. So I don't know, Sean, if you want to go first and maybe talk about the things you feel maybe restrict your artistic freedoms. Yeah, um, I think we're... Like, kind of like it's a two strand thing for me because working in in dance education it's it's more about what can what can I use as a topic that will get the most out of something for the for the children that I'm working with or the young people that I'm working with whereas I'm when I'm creating work on my own I think yeah marketability is is one thing and then I think for well, on a very practical level, space and like a, a usable space for dance. I mean, I'm based in Bridgend and the spaces that we have there are not particularly suitable for dance. So the it's kind of like it's going to Cardiff. It's not far, but it's not somewhere on the doorstep that that is user friendly for dance like the, the the right type of flooring for example like we I work a lot in the Grand Pavilion and downstairs is a concrete floor and upstairs is a theatre space it's a multi it's a multi-purpose venue so I think topics themselves it will come down to things like the marketability and the yeah, the audience response and what I think work that I make, the reason I'm making it is is to ask questions. Um and it's kind of like what question am I am I trying to ask when I'm making work? So that the whole thing about audience I think is definitely important. But on a more practical level, it'll come down to availability of space and the 
yeah, the fund back to funding, but the, the opportunities to do that. Yeah, yeah. I think um, with with audience um, and marketability, um, I think yeah, the marketing of it all you do yeah obviously have to think about, but. Um, yeah, know, knowing your audience is quite a key thing, isn't it? And you know, while we were creating Heis, Voice, the bilingual production, I've been talking about, um, and the work we were creating, creating was quite different, and it was an exploration of work. And um, and not knowing um, who would who this type of work would appeal to, and um, yeah, it, what I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say here is that I don't know. I think Wales is quite safe at the moment, and I think that does restrict us a little bit when we're creating work. You know, we, we do question stuff like, "Oh, will this you know be suitable for this group of people? Uh, this type of person?" Um, uh, yeah, it, it just arises a lot of questions, and uh, yeah, I think I I don't know about you guys. What what do you think about that? Do you think it's safe, and that restricts us a little bit? Yeah, I, I would really agree with that. Actually, um, I don't know wh where the platforms are for more radical work. Um, like I'm from Bridgend, there is no platform at all for artistic expression and pretend uh, in terms of theatre at all. So any work I do, I have to go to Cardiff or Swansea. Um, but even there, yeah, the, the kind of artistic community has become very safe and very... You, you know what you're going to get when you go to the theatre, I think. Yeah. Um, in, in both, like, depending on which venue you go to, you know what style you're going to see and you know you're going to see the same faces there and yeah, there's not that diversity at all. I I don't feel like. How about you, Kerry Ann? Do you feel? Um, because I know you're not as Cardiff-based as the rest of us. Do you have those same problems with location as well? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, like where we are, I'm in Ammonford in Marthenshire, and um, so we have like we have a theatre in Ammonford, which is wonderful, like a really small town, and. Um, like obviously there's not many people living around and not many people that want to go to the theatre, like we haven't got a big sort of arts vibe really. <laughs> and um yeah, and like so then other work I create is in university and then the and then we get the same we get other students, other art students, other people that are interested in art. So we don't really get anyone we don't get yes, we can't really we don't get new audiences and we don't get that many like don't get any like I don't really push boundaries that much. I feel like I don't feel like I push boundaries in my and things I make because we know where yeah everything is safe and the audience will be like so like the youth theatre mess of the mess. If we make something, our audience will normally be like parents or people in the local area, and we all kind of know the audience and we know responses and the actions. And I feel like like yeah, like you were saying about Cardiff and stuff. Like I'll be like when you go up to the Sherman. It's quite the same vibe in different shows, you know what I mean? So I think it's similar, you know, like where I am as well, yeah. It yeah, then I makes... think that's it. Oh, sorry, after you. Sorry, go on, Elgan. I, I was just going to say, I think, you know, with the work that's been created in Wales being safe, I'm not saying all work um, is safe, but a lot of it is, I think. Um, it just then... You know, makes the audience in Wales comfortable, um, which makes it hard then for you know new theatre makers who are creating challenging, provoking work um, to sell, I guess, their show or to um, entice and you know, to get an audience, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely agree and. Um, I, as, as well as making theatre, I also review theatre, and I actually find it very hard sometimes to be completely honest in my reviews because everybody knows everybody else in the theatre scene. Yeah. Um, so if you say something that's quite critical, that could come back to, to bite me at some point, and 
you know, I don't want to be mean, but I, I don't feel that there's a really good critical debate in Wales about art at the moment, um, non-honest debate anyway. And yeah, I, I, as kind of performance makers, have you come across that, that you don't feel your work is fairly reviewed or critiqued in the way that you would like it to be? Sorry, I'll throw uh, that out. Maybe. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it, it's a difficult one. Um, as you say, I think just the whole kind of scene of it is safe, isn't it? Even the kind of social side of it, but also safe. And um, yeah, I feel uh, some of the reviews we had, um, they, they, were, they were a mixture, actually, which I'm glad. You know, we had some great reviews and a couple of not so great reviews. And I think that's that's exciting when it comes to theatre. I think when you get you know flaccid, boring, um, you know middle ground reviews, um, it, it, I don't th I don't think uh, it, it's worked then. But you know theatre, I think, and art is about challenging people and making people questioning. Um, and I, I don't think there's enough of it in Wales at the moment. And you know, yeah, I, I think I'd like to see some more reviews that are you know a bit more challenging towards the product to productions in Wales as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how about you, Sean? Like, do you do you find that with with your work? I know it's slightly different, but um, do you feel that people maybe aren't giving the right the right uh, critical support to your work? I think it it comes down again to like like you said the same audiences. So your work is being viewed. By, like the same theatre audiences, it's exactly the same for the dance audiences. You know exactly who's going to be at every dance piece that's going. You know you're going to see the same faces, and then it's kind of like the conversations after a piece. I don't. I, yeah, you're with the same kind of people in the bar afterwards who you would be at the last show with, and it would be. I think it would be great if we could inject new audiences like. Just but to really mix it up, so you add new people who haven't necessarily seen um, dance before, and then get their reaction. And then I'm not a massive. I haven't seen much theatre this year. I'm not a massive theatre goer, but I could be. You know, it's kind of like people are sticking to the to the things that they know rather than like diversifying. So I think a mix of audiences as well um, could change that but I think it does come down to as as Algalan said as well that that seeing seeing the same people but then having the middle the middle road kind of views like yeah it was okay and not being critical in either way just kind of going yeah it was good everything's like okay it's not you know particularly strong in either way yeah. Um, also, equally to kind of flip it on on the other side, would fear of bad reviews ever stop you creating a piece of work or sharing a piece of work as widely as you would want to, or or would a bad review then stop you making more work if someone really hated something? Um, I mean, obviously, if it was, I don't know, consistent. You know, if you did about three or four productions and it was constant. Bad reviews. Maybe you would question. Yeah, you'd start questioning questioning your own work. But um, no, no. I I think it would be more of a challenge, really. You know, to really, uh, and it would help me as well. I think. You know, I take. I always take from reviews. Um, you know, take from them and uh, you know try and apply. Apply it to um, whatever I create. And um, you know, as you all know, we all know. It, End of the day, it is a lot of it comes down to personal opinion. Um, so you, you, if you do have a bad review, you can't really take it to heart. Um, but it's, it's just another person's opinion. Um, but um, yeah, no, if if you get a bad review that is quite passionate, at least you've kind of ignited something in someone, which in itself is um, an achievement, I think. Um, so yeah, no, I I'd never stop making work if something it would 
um, you know, encourage me to do more work if something. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that's good to hear. Um, how about you carry on? Would, um, like the fear of people's responses maybe stop you making work in the future? Because um, I've only done sort of like youth theatre work and community projects and things. You don't really get that sort of criticism or feedback as much. But I did do um, a project called Queer Christmas last year in Swansea, which was like a site-specific um, piece about um, LGBT rights and just sort of celebrating it and things. And um, we we started off in the Kings on Swansea High Street, which is the gay, the, the gay pub. And um, some of the locals in the pub had like a re like really didn't like they were they were, we are not going to see the show. We we do not want the show to happen. Why are you drawing attention to it? Why are you doing this? And that really affected me. I think like, I think like it made me feel like like those are the people that are. Like they're local and they are in the LGBT community, and I just felt like it was such a positive project, and I was so happy to be working on the project. And then that really sort of hit me a little bit, and I was a bit like, oh, um, maybe you're right. Maybe we are sort of just sort of making something that isn't. I don't know. Like it doesn't. It's just a novelty. Maybe I was thinking. And I was like, but the project was amazing. Like I really enjoyed the project. It didn't really affect me. As, like, to a certain extent, to stop doing something and stop wanting to do it. Like, I still think it was one of the best projects I've worked on, but it's affected me, yeah. Yeah, that makes yeah, a lot of sense. Um, just to kind of um, carry on with some of those points, do you feel that as young theatre makers we're encouraged to make work that is about issues or for a certain group of people? Because I definitely feel that, that um, I couldn't just make a piece of work that was art for art's sake. It would have to benefit the community somehow. And there's, I think there's a really interesting debate about the role of art in society. And I think that there's room for art that definitely has that kind of community benefit or social benefit. But sometimes you could be more encouraged just to make things that are beautiful. And do you, do you feel those barriers in your work sometimes as well? Oh, definitely. Like, um, like being in a youth theatre, like most of the projects are about young people and about issues and about the community, which is obviously like what youth theatre is and what and why we are supported. But I would love to just be able to make something that's be quite beautiful and just doesn't necessarily mean anything or make a difference. Just something one like lovely. Like so, I'm I do art foundation in in university. And I think that's the only time I can make things that are genuinely just something wonderful, like something nice. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, so I do feel restricted by that. And then I think there's definitely we definitely need more of just freedom of doing whatever we want, and it doesn't have to be anything. And then maybe it doesn't even have to like affect people, like you don't have to think of how it affects people, maybe you could just let it happen, you know? Yeah, um, how about you, Sean? Because obviously a lot of the work that you do is uh, is for the benefit of education and community projects. Um, is that something that you've done because that's where the work is available, or is it something that you are really passionate about, and um, or is it a combination of both? Yeah. Uh, no, it's definitely a combination of both for me. I think probably when um, when I first graduated, it was like, oh, I haven't got a job. Uh, I'll go back to what I know, which was I tutored alongside my training the the whole time. So it was always something that I was comfortable in, but it was just something that I thought was like a sideline to what um, to what I would do, which is dance. Um, and I think the more I've done it and the deeper I've gone into it, like I'm doing my uh, diploma in dance teaching and learning at the moment in um, Trinity Laban, and getting more into the theoretical side of learning and how, mine specifically children and young people, but also like how they go about learning and picking up skills, but how that translates into life skills as well. So I think dance and, well, personally I think performance is, in general is an incredible vehicle for a lot of social issues, um, just 
social interactions and skills that young people will need throughout their lives. They don't have to go on to be uh, performers. They don't have to go on to even be technicians. Like, but to, for me, it's very much about not just there is obviously the the skill side of it, but we've got a responsibility to develop the next audience as well. So these young people will be the art consumers of the future. So to get them inspired and talking about dance, performance, theatre, and to get them to have an opinion or to have them have create creative expression. Like for a lot of the work that I do with Regen Youth Dance, uh, myself and Lizzie Davis McMullen will be the choreographers of the piece. But so much of the movement content it comes from young people and I think that's really important as well there are a lot of situations where especially in dance a dance class means you go there you follow the teacher you copy what they do and that's what you do week in week out whereas it's well it's like a fundamental for me that they have they have their input into it it's their artistic expression and I think that to me is what's important about the education side of it is making sure it's not just okay you're going to learn how to do a pirouette like that's great if you want to be a dancer but to create a, a dance audience and, uh, and well an artistic audience that are going to be the consumers of art then they need to be looking at it from that perspective as well yeah I think a really really interesting word to use there was responsibility and the responsibility you feel as um, as an artist and Elgan, when you were making your recent piece, did you feel that you had certain responsibilities that you had to kind of live up to as you made that work? Yeah, I mean, with a piece that was, you know, a, a topic, an, an issue-based piece in a way, um, and it was so personal as well. I did have kind of a, a lot to kind of. Um, prove in a way I guess um, but you know what you were saying Shan about um, kind of influencing other people and impacting other people's um, you know experience when they see a piece of arts come to see a piece of theatre is um, uh, you know it's quite an experience for you as the performer as well and um, it, for me it was quite an overwhelming one with ICE again with it being a so personal, um, having people coming out of it being inspired um, and you know feeling proud and uh, all these kind of feedback we had from them because after the performance we uh, assured there was flashcards so that we had instant respons response from the audience as they come out. Um, so having them to kind of express themselves um, after that I'd expressed myself um, it, it was, you know, it's an experience that um, we should, as a, you know, we, we should really embrace, I think. Um, and, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's enough of it. And, um, yeah, no, the responsibility, you know, is quite, it's quite a big responsibility, actually. Um, but I'm so glad that I did it and shared my own personal story. And I guess that's what it's about, you know, sharing something that you care about. And I, I know what you were saying, um, and carry on about having stuff that necessarily doesn't mean anything. Um, and I think, yeah, I think it's refreshing sometimes to see art that, you know, is just beautiful for what it is. But um, I think if you're going to create, you know, a, a you know, production or something really quite, quite you know, Big, I don't know. Um, it has to have some kind of passion behind it and some a story behind it. You know, you're sharing something with people, aren't you? So, um, yeah, it's you've got to really embrace that and take advantage of the fact that you were having this opportunity to share with people. Um, it's quite a wonderful um, thing to do, I think. Yeah, I am. Um Kind of carrying on with those responsibilities, I know that as a young theatre maker, I feel a lot of pressure to be a positive role model for people who are a bit younger than me, um, to help also help them on their way. And I've been incredibly, incredibly lucky that I've had a lot of support from 
the Young Critics Scheme, and then more recently the Other Room Theatre, who kind of mentored me and helped me uh, start learning what kind of artist I want to be. So, Kerry Ann, do you feel like there are enough positive role models in theatre from your background? Like for me, I'm, you know, a girl, which there's still that kind of gender debate always going on in theatre. And as well, I'm from a non-traditional theatre-going background, and you know, not from a family that goes to the theatre. So, do you feel like there are enough role models uh, that you see, Kerry Ann, in in theatre and arts that would inspire you to to go on and pursue a career? Yeah, I feel like I've been around lots of role models, like Mess and Mess Theatre Company. The majority of the staff are women, and they're all really inspiring, and they're really helpful, and they want to help every single young person that comes to the youth theatre. Um, we also have a scheme called Peer Leader where like all the members of the youth theatre, like myself, uh, we do training and we, we mentor like the younger ones and we can run workshops and we're constantly helping out each other and I feel like I've been really supported. Like I feel I can like I wouldn't have done most of the things I've done within arts if it wasn't for them. And um, I'm lucky, like, it's really lucky I think. That I've got this, like, because obviously not a lot of communities have in quite a small community where we are, and there isn't that much to do with arts around. Like, if if Mess Mess wasn't here, then I don't like there isn't really anything else. So, um, yeah, yeah. Sean, I saw you kind of nodding along when I was talking about feeling the pressure to be a role model. Would you mind kind of talking a little bit about that? Uh, well, Chelsea and I went to the same youth theatre for a start, so uh, we had a lot of the same role models as we were growing up as young, uh, just arts makers. I think we weren't we weren't actors, we weren't performers, we were we were a bit of everything, and we were in a very strong youth theatre that had that gave us a lot of different opportunities. And then I think as it was just a natural progression in that sense for certainly as we got older through the youth theatre, that it had happened to us. We'd watched people go through the youth theatre who were older than us, and they became role models who we all looked up to. So then it is, again, it's back to that word responsibility. I felt a big responsibility as we became those older members of the youth theatre, that we had, you know, we did have a responsibility. It was, to, it was a responsibility not just as an older person, but to the quality of the work, to the work ethic, to to everything that made the youth theatre what it was to us. And I think at the same time that I was in the youth theatre, I was in youth dance as well. And the same the same thing really. I feel like you can the best way to show someone like that something works is to be a good role model. So to know that, like, I, I do owe a lot to the youth theatre and the youth dance companies that I was a part of when I was younger. It was that, I do think that's where a lot of my work ethic comes from. So I think that's the whole thing about we were in rehearsals on time and we made a thing about it. So that it's, it's, uh, it's creating, you, you're carrying on that tradition, you're creating that environment that is healthy but is also enables you to produce high quality artwork of whatever whatever genre, whatever format, yeah. I think um, actually you, you bring up the youth theatre has made me kind of consider some of those role models that I had um, from that youth theatre and now how many of them have gone off to work in London and I wonder if we could maybe speak a bit about um, what makes people go to London to make work and what makes them stay in Wales. Um, maybe Algan you'd like to start because obviously you know your work has maybe more of an audience in Wales than it would in London. Yeah I mean well the production we did over the summer now I don't I don't think you know it, yeah the audience is there for it in Wales I think and the fact that we can kind of advertise and market it you know as a bilingual um, production it's obviously going to attract people in Wales but I think it, it yeah it is taking it to Edinburgh then um, proved to me that it was accessible to you know uh, people beyond Wales as well uh, and 
talking about you know going back to reviews I remember we had one that um, uh, said that it, it would be a piece that only people who know Elgan would resonate and you know um, engage with and uh, that did knock me down a little bit but um, taking it to Edinburgh again so outside of Wales um, and sharing a story uh, sharing my story and having uh, the same kind of impact um, on people who don't live in Wales just proved to me that you know uh, yeah you you can th there is that freedom to share uh, and express your work outside of Wales as well but um, in terms of London I don't know it seems like the place to go at the moment a lot of people I, well I think it's been the place to go for obviously quite a while um, but um, do you know what I'm quite content in Cardiff I think there's a lot going on here at the moment and um, it, there's something quite exciting about Cardiff at the moment and um, uh, there's something really un um, appetizing about London for me just because this is this massive pool with loads of people trying to you know it's more of competition if something there whereas here I think there's more of a communitas feel in a way um, which you know like we've been saying about having support from uh, other organizations other people having people to kind of look up to I think it's all kind of here for us in Cardiff and in Wales I think um, it, it's kind of easier to find if something and people are more willing to help um, I mean I, you know I can't say that being in London there wouldn't be people there to help but um, I think it, it's it, it, there's something quite reassuring about uh, this communitas we have here in Wales yeah, I, I would actually agree with that. Um, but then equally, I think sometimes because it is such a close-knit community, it can be quite daunting Like because it feels something to everybody else knows everyone else. Yeah. Uh, when I was starting out, I felt like an outsider from that. And I don't know, carry on maybe, you know, as someone coming up through a youth theatre, do you kind of maybe find that a bit daunting that the community is so close-knit? Yeah, definitely, because uh, um, in the summer I did some work with Theatre again. And they have so much networks and they know lots of people and it is very close. Love. It's like, I did feel like, I was like, how do I get in? How do I try and join this? But then on the other hand, like, I think Cardiff is a really exciting place and I feel like everyone is really friendly and nice and supportive of each other, like within the arts. And um, yeah, so it's like a kind of mixed reaction, I think, with me. It's like, on one side of it, I'm like, yeah, I can get in, I can, everyone's really lovely and I can meet new people and become part of this community, but on the other hand it is also really scary and and it can be quite like clicky as well I feel, like and that's a bit daunting, yeah. <laughs> I think, um, yeah. That, do you know that doubt you were saying, um, Chelsea, I think that's one of the things you've got to kind of just let go as an artist I think and you know it, it's natural as artists as well I think for as to have that doubt, um, you know, as performers and um, theatre makers, we we will always have that. But um, I think you need to kind of embrace that um, communitas feel and embrace other people's support. But then, when you're creating your own work, um, you need to kind of let go of that doubt and just be confident in what you're doing. And um, so, obviously, yeah, yeah, what I did basically with guys was, you know, I received a lot of support from different kind of uh, theatre makers and practitioners and just kind of took what helped me whilst I was creating my own work and kind of applied it to my own work then but you know if they don't like your work if people don't like your work and you know word can spread around then within this small close-knit society and um, community um, you know just kind of just you know, just be happy in what you're creating, I think. Yeah, I something that I, I'm quite interested to ask you is, um, like, I spent three months working in London over the summer, and during that time I worked as a performer, a designer, a director, you know, and I, I kind of dislike the term theatre maker because people are confused by it. But in Wales, I actually feel a lot of the time like I need to pigeonhole myself as one thing, 
So normally I would say that I'm a director, um, but then that sometimes limits the opportunities that I feel I can apply for. And do you get that as well, that you, you have to be one thing in Wales um, so that people know who you are and what to expect from you? Um, if we go to Sean first. Yeah, I think um, I I class myself as a freelance dance artist or dance practitioner, but that you know I create work, I teach, I perform in other people's productions. It's yeah, you kind of you want to establish yourself as a strong person in those different areas as well. So some people will know me just as a dance. Uh, development kind of person. Some people will just know me as a dancer. And I think you yeah, it you you find yourself limited. It's like, oh I'm a dance teacher and it's like, oh so you don't you don't perform and you don't make. It's like, well actually I do. Um I think and the same as well as like crossing into other art forms as well. Like I'm I'm more than happy to, to do assistant stage management stuff on things and just to I love the idea of working across different art forms and across different different types of productions as well in within different roles. Um, I do find that because you want to become established and you want to be able to you know to sell yourself that you can often find yourself pitching yourself as just one thing when actually I think most of us would say we've got a much more varied skill set than what we might necessarily be presenting each time. Yeah, and Elgan, do you feel the same as well as somebody who has worked for a theatre and now is making your own work? Do you feel a pressure to kind of really crystallise what it is that you want to be and the work you want to make, like now, rather than giving yourself a chance to experiment and develop with lots of different things first? Yeah, and no, I think you do get the odd people who are confused when you say that you know you act and then you write a little bit as well and you 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 know you teach as well um but i think now's the time you know for you know us at the age we are to you know like you say to experiment and to not kind of restrict yourself and just be free in giving it a go at directing and giving it a go at writing something and just kind of really finding out what it is within you know, theatre or dance or art that is your kind of niche, I guess. Um, but yeah, again, I don't know, you know, uh, I think I think possibly in 10 years' time, 15 years' time, unless I've got bored or whatever, <laughs> um, I think I'll still be experimenting. Um, I think it working in theatre and the art, I think <laughs> it's always going to be, um, you know, everything's going to be fresh and new and you're always going to want to experiment in different stuff and I think it's it's a lot more exciting really to be able to you know not have your eggs in one basket isn't it? Yeah definitely. Um, Karen, when you were saying about um, the amount of freedom you feel in university and you Elgin actually I sometimes felt the opposite in that I did English and drama as my degree and on the drama side um, uh, we were very, very led to do certain things and kind of tick boxes to get the right grades, um, which actually I think has benefited me in a way now that I'm um, I strive for higher standards in my own work. But uh, Kerry, do you feel do you kind of worry that when you leave university you won't have those same freedoms anymore, or do you think that you'll have more freedom afterwards? Um. I'm not sure because I'm doing a foundation year, so I haven't actually started my degree yet. And this foundation year is a really open course. It's like you can do what you want, you can explore. And then I've, I've like I've been trying to think now, what degree do I want to do? What like do you have to do it? Like the degrees are quite specialised, and that's quite scary. Like I don't know what I want to specialise in. Like I love theatre design, I love writing, and I love performing, and. Um, I think the course at the moment is really helpful for me because they do just, they, they are very like, do whatever you want and everything. And the, the rest of the mess are very, like, they support you with whatever you want to do. So maybe afterwards it will be scary. Maybe after I finish university it will be really 
different. Like I haven't really thought about it. I don't really know how things are going to change. It'd probably be harder to be more a broader, like have a broader spectrum of what you do because you need to have a specific job. You know what I mean? Maybe like you have to specific. Maybe you do have to specialise a bit more. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's really interesting and something I'm interested in on a personal level is the role of education in arts because I know that through school I was very academic and I was very much discouraged from pursuing anything artistic as a career. I was um, very much encouraged to go and study something scientific, like a real job. Um, and I don't know if any of you also had that kind of pressure from education or you know, I was lucky that my parents supported me and uh, my choice to do something artistic, but yeah, education was very restrictive to me, and I don't know if any of you felt the same. I know, Sean, you went to the same secondary <laughs> school as me, so maybe yeah. if you want to kind of talk about that a little bit as well. Yeah, um, so the school we went to is a quite a, a well, when we were there, it was a very good school. Um, it's an academic school, it's a, you go straight on to sixth form, most people generally go straight on to sixth form, they do their A-levels and they go straight off to university. Um, I didn't apply for university in my in my last year of, of my A-levels um, because I knew I knew that I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, I got my A-level results and I had teachers, because they came out better than I was expecting, I had teachers going we'll put you on clear and we'll put you on, we'll put you on a course, we'll get you on a course. And I just remember being, like, I've made this decision for a reason. I know I'm not, I know I'm not ready and I know I, I don't know what I want to do yet. Um, I think I was lucky in that sense that my mum was quite supportive of me doing that. And although I think she probably found it incredibly frustrating that I didn't know what I wanted to do, she wasn't in any way pushing me to go on to university to do something that I didn't want to do. Um, I did a foundation in art and design because I hadn't, I'd done AS, art, not done very well at it, knew that I could do art, just not in the constraints that it was within an A-level, spent a year just really exploring that and just doing something for me, and then after that year when they were going to UCAS and saying, you know, it's time to apply, I still knew I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, so I spent a year then working for a production company and um, the youth dance company that I now work for and that was, I was a member of um, and just just gave myself time to really think about what it was I wanted to do and at the same time get lots of different experiences. I knew from that from the year working with the production company and with the youth dance company that I wanted to work in some way within the arts whether or not that was going into a degree to then do it or whether I was going to try and look for a placement or try and get a job and work my way up. I knew that I wanted to work within the arts. Um, Lizzie, who was my teacher at the time and still my mentor now, um, encouraged me to audition and um, I got into dance college and that was a big turning point for me because I hadn't expected to get in. Uh, I, I was going to shut people up and to tell me to stop auditioning. Um, but when I got in, I was like, oh, well, I'd better go then. So, um, yeah, the education side, as Chelsea, like I, I was studying biology and chemistry at A-level, had ideas of going off to do medicine. And I think that even in a, a school that, you know, it had a, an okay drama department and we did the odd thing through like school with the arts. I'd say, speaking on behalf of Chelsea as well, the majority of art stuff that we did was extracurricular and not particularly within school. And that school for us had a much more academic focus than an, than an arts focus. Yeah, just as a kind of last question to pick up what you were saying there. Um, you obviously went to a dance college and I went to a university and did an arts course at a university and yeah. for a while I felt a lot of pressure to go and do a masters at a drama school in directing and I just wanted to ask Elgan, do you feel, um, have you ever felt that pressure to go to a drama school rather than a, <coughs> a conventional university? Yeah, I mean, 
you know, when I was in A level as well, I was expected to go to university, um, but then I applied for uh, a few drama colleges because I thought that was the, you know, the right thing to do if you wanted to become a performer. Um, so I applied for all these, uh, you know, co uh, colleges, schools, what have you, in London. Um, I didn't get in, um, but then I had. Uh, a course at this university, University of South Wales by now, uh, to do theatre and drama. And um, yeah, no, I, I got in there and thought, oh, do you know what, I'll give it a go. And um, ended up being the best thing that I did because it, you know, having heard about a lot of these drama um, uh, schools who do acting courses, directing courses, for me, I, I feel they sound a lot more restricted and, you know, that's fine if you know what you want to do. If you want to be an actor, that's you know given the tools. Uh, want to be a director that has been handed tools, or whatnot at these drama colleges, um, then go for it. But for me, having the chance to do a course that allowed me to be so free in, in the sense of you know experimenting the best way for me as a performer, the best way for me as a writer, because it was so so open. It, yeah, it just allowed me to find my way of expressing myself through script writing and through um, physical theatre, which is, uh, you know, quite a big thing in my life now. It's that I've discovered, through this course, I've discovered the way that I like to create theatre and I like to perform. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I wouldn't change that at all. Um, and also, you know, like I was saying about having spare time as well to go out there and just do it whereas on these courses in drama colleges you you are there in this college almost hibernating for three years I feel um, just kind of you know there nine till six every day whereas on the course I had I had the chance to go out there and just you know it was I don't know I just found there was more reality and truth to to my course you know yeah Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to start kind of summing up um, what we've been talking about and if there's anything else that anyone wants to kind of uh, get off their chest now, <laughs> it's probably a good time to say anything, if there's anything else. But we've kind of been talking about uh, location and how that can sometimes be a problem in Wales, um, both in terms of things being Cardiff-centric, but also people feeling that London is sometimes a better option. and I find it really interesting what we've been saying about education and how that can sometimes limit you or for you depending on, on the choices you make and also the pressure to make decisions about where or what you want to study and what kind of artist you want to be. I, I found that really kind of fascinating. And we also sort of touched on ideas about criticism and the role of critical debate within, within the art um, and also then the responsibility you feel as an artist, whether that's to be a role model or to make a certain kind of work because you feel that that's what the audience want to see. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for, for chatting and uh, to anyone who's uh, kind of logged in to watch the debate, thank you for watching and um, yeah, I guess I hope this debate continues uh, further than just this video chat. So thank you very much and hopefully speak to you all soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.